What is PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome? Let's find out. Polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS is a hormonal disorder that affects 10% of women of reproductive age. Polycystic ovary syndrome is characterized by high male hormone levels and low progesterone levels, which leaves your estrogen unopposed. Usually PCOS is first diagnosed in young women, but it can be missed early in life and not be diagnosed until you're premenopausal. It was first named in 1935 by Stein and Leventhal. However, all the way back in the 1700s, an Italian scientist described a married and fertile woman with shiny ovaries with a white surface and they were the size of pigeon eggs, which is way too big. So we've known about PCOS for a while. It's not a new disorder. And PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome is rather a misnomer. While it was first noted in women with many cysts on their ovaries, their hormonal imbalance was believed to be derived from the cystic ovaries, but that's not the case. The hormonal imbalance of polycystic ovary syndrome derives from the hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus controls all of your sex hormones and your adrenal hormones, as well as the rest of the hormones in your body. It also controls inflammation or the inflammatory markers that are in your blood. PCOS is characterized by high male hormones, both testosterone and DHEA, as well as high inflammatory markers. Women with polycystic ovary syndrome may have insulin resistance, which causes metabolic inflammation. Polycystic ovary syndrome is a metabolic disease of young women and metabolic diseases originate in the hypothalamus. When your hypothalamus becomes out of balance due to high stress or poor nutrition or toxins, you can develop metabolic issues like polycystic ovary syndrome. Your adrenal glands produce stress hormones, including DHEA. High levels of stress can be one of the risk factors of developing polycystic ovary syndrome. Another risk factor for developing PCOS is the meal. We're not sure if it's hereditary or if it runs in the family because of behavior. But if your mother or sisters have PCOS, oftentimes your mother may not have been even diagnosed. She may have had infertility issues or maybe early miscarriages. Maybe she had trouble with facial hair or central obesity, all the classic signs of PCOS. You may be more likely to develop polycystic ovary syndrome. Environmental exposures like xenoestrogens and endocrine disruptors, they affect your genetics and they may play relevant roles in developing PCOS. Women with PCOS may have infrequent or prolonged menstrual periods. They may even skip their periods altogether. Their ovaries develop numerous follicles which fill with fluid and become cysts. Women with PCS do not ovulate regularly, and they may be infertile or have difficulty getting pregnant or miscarry early. One third of women with PCOS also have features of metabolic syndrome, and that includes insulin resistance, obesity, and dyslipidemia, which means your cholesterol levels are too high. It's insulin resistant, which inhibits your liver's ability to produce sex hormone binding globulin. Sex hormone binding globulin keeps your testosterone levels in check. Insulin resistance stimulates ovarian and adrenal androgen secretion, so you have more male hormone on board. Dysfunctional white adipose tissue has been identified as a major contributing factor for insulin resistance in PCOS. Women tend to accumulate white adipose tissue in what we call the gynoid distribution, the hips, the buttocks, the thighs where women with PCOS gain fat in the android or male distribution around the abdomen. This dysfunctional white adipose tissue seen in PCOS increases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So a woman with polycystic ovary syndrome classically has multiple cysts on her ovaries due to lack of ovulation and increased follicle stimulation. The cystic ovaries are often caused by a hypothalamic pituitary ovarian imbalance. The high androgens or male hormones in PCOS are also caused by a hypothalamic pituitary adrenal imbalance. 
High stress revs up your adrenal glands and increases the output of DHEA, which gets converted into testosterone. High stress will interfere with your fertility, which will decrease your likelihood of ovulation and lower progesterone levels, which have a calming effect and an anti-inflammatory effect in the body, are characteristically very low in polycystic ovary syndrome. So without ovulating and lowering the inflammation every month with adequate production of progesterone, you can develop multiple cysts on your ovaries, follicles that continue to get stimulated by high levels of follicle-stimulating hormone. That puts your estrogen to progesterone ratio off, it creates estrogen dominance. And those follicles eventually develop into theca cells, which produce high levels of testosterone. Now, if you have any questions about polycystic ovary syndrome, why don't you join us in our hormone support group where you can get access through our free hormone reboot training. While polycystic ovary syndrome is considered a medical diagnosis and it's been treated by allopathic physicians with medications, there are more natural ways to treat polycystic ovary syndrome that allow you to be able to have a return of your fertility, normalization of your periods, and balancing of your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which will lower your inflammation. Now check out my next video on the treatment of polycystic ovary syndrome.